Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Wow, what a week. The stock market did it again. Uh, we should still look for what is driving it, and that is the spreads and the yield curve, and so we must begin with that. I understand that this is going to be a very important video for all of you, and I'm going to try and drill down into what is actually going on and where the real money is going so that you have a much better uh, opportunity of getting it right in the weeks ahead. Now this is a chart of the five-year. The five-year is actually now uh, re reacting to the stock market and basically it's come back from the 308 level to just below uh, to just below three so about eight basis points nine basis points of reaction to the move in the stock market which is much the same as it had uh, in February that actually tells us that uh, it's not going to uh, do much more than this as you can see it's uh, you have the Bollinger Bands which are now contracting it would just not be surprising at all to see the uh, five-year trade in a range between call it 293 294 and probably this gap here which is around 306 so you know it 10 12 14 basis points range for the next week while these Bollinger Bands close but the picture in five years and the picture in 10 and 30s and especially 30s is completely different. This is uh, tens, the yield, and what have they done? They've done nothing but come back to the Bollinger Band. Uh, it was, as I said last week, terribly unlikely that we're going to stay above the weekly Bollinger Band for very long. Uh, so basically what it tells us now is that we are going to have a, a range between three-ish roughly on the downside and whatever this Bollinger Band will go to 317 something like that next week. Uh, that is your range for next week but that is still very bullish for yields in the months to come. Uh, there is no sign of a turn. Uh, there is just sign of some money, some marginal money, leaving the stock market and going into fixed income, but not a lot of it. So th that trend really has not started. Let's have a look at 30s, and that is just as bad if we put up a chart of TLT and... Uh, enlarge this large last area well it actually closed still below the weekly Bollinger Band that to us tells us that we are probably likely next week to go into probably the one even in the 116s before the larger trend reasserts itself so we have to play this via options we have to wait for the market to get uh, overextended to the upside and then buy long-term put spreads because a they'll be cheap and b it's, it's very difficult the from will. this angle to argue that the market is doing anything but correcting and is ready for the next leg lower uh, TLT to us is to be avoided at all costs it's the yield curve which is normalizing as Nukin, or whatever his name is, said on Friday, uh, twos and fives is where people are going to part their money and are going to be the least volatile and probably anchors, and the tens and thirties are going to be areas which people are still going to be avoiding unless there is a complete and utter nightmare in the stock market. Five year in Germany, well, all it did is it corrected the overbought levels that it was above the Bollinger Band. It's come back to below the Bollinger Band, but it's turning the whole trend. This whole trend is uh, absolutely turning wonderfully. 
uh, it's indicating to us that after a few more weeks sideways it'll break up and go into positive territory uh, much the same thing for the 10-year uh, and the Bund it's also indicating to us a couple of more bars uh, weeks around here and then we can go possibly quite significantly higher and test into the 60s and 70s towards the end of the year. The spread between Germany and the US keeps on trucking higher. It's now in an established uptrend having broken the 258-259 level where it was stuck for many months. It is now going higher, 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 higher. We expect this might reach very close to three percentage points, maybe 290 uh, during quarter four, showing that there is an exodus from, uh, the, uh, from the US fixed income, which should continue. Uh, the yield curve should steepen in the US. Uh, money should continue to leave the long end of the market. Having covered fixed income, let's see what the internals of the stock market are doing. Our models gave uh, sell signals on the daily and the weekly in daily and weekly time frames and went into uh, bonds. This model only allocates between uh, either risk on SPY or risk off TLT. It doesn't have the benefit of the knowledge to go into the short end of the yield curve or the long end of the yield curve is just a an indicator what is important is uh, the spread calculator has made a new low for the move it is now much lower than it was when we had the mayor in uh, february it is actually saying that the situation in the internals of the market, the spreads between different asset classes, is now far worse than it was in February. This is a big development. We have a score which is now just above zero and it's vacillating just above zero. You can see it went from the very high 70s very neutral into the 50s and now it's hovering just above zero this is basically what it did in 2007 this is basically what it did in 2010 and then what it did uh, in uh, late 2013 these are all very very important warning signs about what is about to happen to the stock market and here is the remarkable fact both the, one of the daily counter trend models has given a buy signal and the weekly counter trend model has given a buy signal. What does that mean? That means that positioning longs in equities have turned into trading longs in equities in all the models. This is very significant because the trading longs will be bailed out at some stage over the course of the next three weeks. That tells us, even gives us a time frame uh, of three weeks before the market, uh, when the market could recover and before the market starts having another nightmare. Uh, the model could well recover over the course of the next three weeks, but it's incumbent upon the spreads to actually do something uh, very very important over the next three weeks and now let's have a look at the spreads and see if there's any likelihood that they're going to do that and here we are with the spreads this is the earliest one the fastest which is the semiconductors over the yen it's broken the 200 day it's broke well the 50 days turn the 200 day is turning it's way below uh, but you can see what how big the panic was. It has room to go up to 3% without any problem, without having done anything good to turn these moving averages. In fact, it will be turning them down. Uh, so you need a massive move, a massive move, uh, i.e. it needs to go back towards the highs 
to do any good. You can see for the first time in a long time the 200 day actually now is negatively sloped. Uh, it, it, if it plays around here for a couple of weeks that is no good. That is a very shallow recovery that will do absolutely no good for the spreads. SPY TLT I sh said last week that it was still risk on because it was still crawling at the top. Well, it's now, rec you know, uh, hugely uh, come back. Uh, it's below the 50 day, still above the 200 day. This is going to take a long time to turn the, the 200 day moving average. So th this is again another spread saying caution. Okay, caution, but uh, no immediate threat of a breakdown. Okay, and this is exactly where stuff gets very, very, very interesting. XLP over XLY, one of my favorite risk on, risk off indicators. Uh, I mean, how, how amazing is that? A touch of the 200 day moving average in XLP, XLY. On the other side of that, very, very bad things start happening. You have the 50 day now positively sloped. This sort of trades like this for a few days, weeks, and then we might be in real, real, real trouble. If XLP, XLY goes negative, uh, and let me show you how, uh, how, when the last time was that that happened, the last time that happened, was basically December of 2015. And we all know what happened in January, February of 2016. The market really, really had a very, very nasty time. So it's building, isn't it? it it's unless this now starts going significantly lower, uh, it is a very, very bad sign for the longer term for SPY. I like looking at XLY, so consumer discretionary over SPY, because the consumer in the States is very, very important. Uh, if the consumer gives up, we are going to have a very, very nasty time uh, in the stock market overall. Look how it came right down to the 200 day and it's now started to go up. Thank you. Thanks to Amazon as usual. But if you can't clear the 50 day moving average in the next few days, uh, the chances of a breakdown in, in XLY over SPY just keep on increasing. Uh, again, telling us that if the upside is not quite high, uh, we are in trouble. Another one of my favorites, which is the Dow over the Qs, is basically telling us that we are going to have a very volatile time up and down, up and down, before the market makes up its mind. This, to me, is a defensive posture by the market. Uh, if the Qs cannot stabilize and take the market higher, i.e. if tech can't take the market higher, uh, we will be looking for new factors of stability. And actually, my new factor of stability will be XLF because of the steepening of the yield curve. And then technology. I mean, technology, what I'm saying is that technology is becoming binary here. Technology now either takes up the baton and tries to make new highs or it's going to fall apart. It's very, very binary. And let's have a look at NQ. And here we have weekly NQ. Let's zoom in to this area. Actually, NQ became, you know, is the only one that actually busts through the weekly uh, Bollinger and actually touched this moving average that he hasn't closed below since God was a boy. Uh, and it was just a great buy for the reaction. So this to me definitely does not look like it's ready to break down significantly. Uh, it needs several weeks of price action uh, before the Bollinger Bands allow it to open and go down. Yes, we do have a sell signal from the MACD, but we've had it uh, 
basically last week and that is why we avoided it uh, now really I would quite expect the market to probably trade somewhere around 7,350 to 7,400 that to me is probably the path of least res path of least resistance over the course of the week ahead so that to me tells me there is not going to be uh, a another uh, complete disaster in SPY and SPY oh dear oh dear oh dear what did we think last week we thought we'd test the 2820 area where this red uh, moving average was that had caught everything uh, basically since uh, April May this year and yes we got that but we got so much more it nearly went in spite of the bottom of the Bollinger Band that to us tells us that uh, S&P's next week can trade between uh, the highs that we had back in March which is 2802 all the way up to where these moving averages are which is about 2825 and this one will be round 2825 as well so 2820 let's call it becomes the swing level if the market closes above 2820 everything that I'm saying is rubbish uh, the the market is very strong the spreads will probably turn the model will probably turn and the trading longs will once again become uh, positioning longs but that is a long way away uh, 2820 is where you want to make your uh, risk reward stand by buying put spreads if we drill down on a daily chart we can see really that all that has been happening this year is just about negated we are right on top of the 200 day moving average well where where's the market going to go to here we are 28 23 this is where these moving averages will be coming in together uh, very interesting that this uh, this kind of level is where we spent so much time consolidating back in July before we made the move higher uh, that is so 2820 ish becomes such an important level uh, if we do not clear it next week I fear that we are setting ourselves up for another retest of the lows this is basically another run blind model which basically says when this ratio is below one you buy it and when it's at 130 you sell it uh, here we are we are well below one chances are and this model is saying uh, we are bound to recover to something like 28 20 28 25 uh, I really would not be short here if the risk reward isn't worth it the risk reward here is to be long via call spreads until we get to 28 20 and reverse into put spreads I have enlarged this daily chart of VIX to uh, show you how everything more or less comes together VIX basically traded just about the best part of three days above its uh, Bollinger Bands and now probably it's ready to crash down to 18 over the course of the next couple of days which is interesting because on uh, Wednesday we have the expiry of the October contract so the October contract could go out somewhere around 18 uh, given the fact that it's trading above 20 now it's quite an interesting fact so we could have a big move in the uh, in in that contract that also would coincide with the market trading above 2800 somewhere around 2820 giving us our opportunity to look for a swing higher in volatility and a swing lower in price on a weekly basis uh, we have a an interesting uh, development in volatility insofar as we are about in the next few days to get a significant move of the moving average above the 200 day moving average that will signify that for the whole of the next quarter or this quarter we could be having uh, basing of 
volatility at lower levels, uh, sorry, at higher levels than we are used to. Volatility could base uh, around the 15 area as opposed to basing around the 11 area. So that is to us very interesting over uh, a medium term development saying that uh, we really uh, are in for a period of higher volatility during the whole of quarter four which would be a very big change to what we are used to because let's face it everyone's expecting the quarter four rally to take place and if they're disappointed uh, things could get very ugly. You might remember this uh, XLF spread against the yield curve basically the very short saying you know what we've been banging on about for a long long time saying that uh, XLF just you know is is on fumes here um, this is the one that we actually look for to give us the first clues that uh, things could turn it's far too early but what we do think is that as the yield curve steepens and don't forget that we're looking for a steeper yield curve so we're looking for these blue prices to slowly start going higher where while this comes lower this will be the first sign that it's time to start buying XLF and stabilizing the stock market. So not until XLF has come down quite a bit more will we be buying uh, XLF and the market itself. But what we are saying is that this buy itself is a self-correcting mechanism. As the yield curve steepens, XLF becomes a better buy. And as such, since it's about 20 to 25 percent of the index, uh, the index will stabilize at lower prices. Uh, this is a weekly chart of the uh, of the stocks. Uh, what to say? Avoid Europe like the plague. Don't know what is going on. Don't know why. Prices below all the moving averages. All the moving averages are pointing south. Uh, I mean, you must have a really, really good reason to want to buy this, which I don't see. Okay, it might go sideways for another few weeks, but the, the trend is very much clear. It's possibly doing what we did here, one, two, three weeks back down new lows. Um, it is just to be avoided at all costs. Uh, nothing to be gained by being structurally long of Europe. The DAX isn't much better, but it is very, very important where it is. We are now at the 200 week moving average and this very important level here, uh, 11,430 to 11,366. Uh, these are extremely extremely important levels we did buy it at 11,410 for a bounce uh, we got the bounce yeah I'm not really sure that I want to be long of this one for the very long term could we get another because it is below the weekly Bollinger could we get uh, some reaction towards 11,700 11,800 sure but just like the stocks look at all these longer term moving averages it is just not a pretty picture so DAX stocks just to be avoided uh, basically if you get a nice rally it's probably time to sell notice how the Nikkei on a weekly is a completely different picture to the DAX or the stocks you have strongly moving uh, moving averages to the highs every single one is in the right space this basically is saying that you should be buying structurally you should be long of japan and short of europe it's a position that we uh, fundamentally uh, from a macro position like and it could be very very interesting over the years uh, ahead uh, it's a position that we structurally have on and will continue to monitor and this is that spread.
EWG, so the German ETF in dollars against EWJ, which is the Japan ETF in dollars. Uh, you can see that all the way back to 2009, we've broken basically this uptrend. There was an uptrend. It is now in a very clear downtrend. Uh, every time it pokes its head anywhere near this green moving average, we are sellers. We're not saying the, this is probably the best time, but actually it's breaking the previous lows. So chances are that it could go easily another 3-4%. Uh, it's telling you there is something going on in Japan which is much more positive than what is going on in Europe which fundamentally people will always tell you is not the case, but the price is telling you, buy Japan, sell Europe. Finally, a quick look at the dollar. I mean, the dollar is as boring as boring can be. That is because the volatility is in equities. Uh, volatility will return to foreign exchange, and we think it's still going to return to the upside because the spread between uh, Germany and uh, the US in terms of yield keeps on going out. At the moment, we still don't want to trade anywhere but our levels which are in the sheet. Uh, we just don't see the point of doing anything at all here at 95.07. This is the midpoint of the range. We still think that before year end, we get a strong move to close above 98 and then we see. So what are we saying about next week? We're saying the uh, US yield curve is likely to steepen. Uh, if you want to be long of it, stick to the short end, stick to the twos and fives, avoid TLT like the plague. Even if it rallies, it's uh, just setting itself up for a much bigger fall. Uh, Buns and bobble rates will go up worldwide. Uh, pick a nice point next to the uh, center of the weekly Bollinger Bands. That will be the, your level to get in and get short of Buns and Bobble. SPX, this is what we said last week. Uh, 29.05, 28.95. If you can't be at Beric that, it's going to go down to 62 and then 28.20 ish. Well, we got that in spades. And now what we're saying, if we can't go above 2805, 2822, uh, then uh, things are not going well. And that is the level that you want to buy put spreads. So anything above 2800, you want to buy put spreads. Uh, 2650, just in case it starts going down for some reason, is still the 15 times Blue Angels and will hold for a good while. There is absolutely no way that unless something amazing happens that this market will trade underneath 2650 for an extended period of time. Right, well, we were looking for NQ for 7100. Now we're looking for uh, probably 7350. Uh, sorry, 7350 will be the level that you want to be buying uh, the put spreads. It is likely to trade 7350 without too much problem, we think. Now, the XLF we told you all about. VIX by the deep dip. That is where we want to uh, get uh, long, anywhere around 15 for the long ter longer term, which will not be seen next week. But 15 now becomes the higher level that we want to be uh, getting long of volatility. European equities, we told you, uh, we are 11,450 in the DAX. This is such an important level. Uh, it is uh, very, very, very important. European equities to us uh, are a complete avoid. The dollar, we've told you, we don't want to trade it here, either 9650 or 9363. And this still applies. Okay, stay long of quite of long quality stocks. Uh, that is the D, uh, the DJI, the Nikkei against the NQ and the XBX in Europe, especially over the medium term. This doesn't apply for the next few days. This applies for the next few months. The spreads are telling you that the higher the quality, the better the return will be. In the, in the medium term. 
Thank you very much indeed and a profitable week next week and tweet you on Monday.